Actually, Tesla is one of the most profound AI companies out there. And that is why it is at the top of ARKK, ARKQ, ARKW has a big position in it as well. It is not an auto company. It is a technology company. And autonomous taxi platforms, uh, we believe, are the biggest opportunity in the next five to 10 years out there around artificial intelligence. So just to give you a sense of that, Tesla right now, its gross margins are in the 25% range. That's electric vehicles. We think they're going up from there. But autonomous is a SaaS model. Those autonomous taxi platforms, and we think Tesla's in the pole position to be the platform, the primary platform in the United States, those gross margins will be in the 80% range. So we believe that if, so our target price for Tesla, at least the published one right now, is in the fifteen to $1,600 range wow. from roughly 200 today. In the next five, we have a five-year investment time horizon. And uh, we believe that a third of that, roughly, uh, will come just from the electric vehicle scaling. I mean, we're in the sweet spot of the S-curve for EVs now. The rest of it will come from AI. And we think, you know, those looking for killer apps, that's probably the biggest killer app out there globally. Uh, electric vehicle sales, I think we're up 62%, although they may have revised that uh, by the final version of this. And we go into, into the rights law and how it's Im impacting batteries and, and, and drive trains. And, you know, we show that EVs have hit price parity with gas-powered vehicles. And now they're about to go into another accelerated decline in price as gas-powered vehicles just will not be able to compete. So we do think that gas-powered vehicles are serious risk here. And we get into autonomous ride hail, and you know we believe that Tesla's in the pole position there, certainly in the United States. But we also highlight once again how global oil demand is at risk because of electric and autonomous. And we would not be surprised by the year 2035 to see oil demand down 30% from where it is today. And even by 2030, by 5% or 5 million barrels per day, lower than it is today. So, and we also, could, we also believe that auto sales may have peaked in 2017, that ride hail, both human driven and that soon autonomous, are going to continue driving down the demand for autos because the capacity utilization associated with ride hail vehicles is so much higher than personally driven vehicles. And then we go into autonomous logistics and how uh, drones are going to collapse the cost of the deli delivery cost, the delivery cost of local small items down by 22 fold from five dollars and 40 cents to 25 cents. And that's per delivery. Now this will be at scale. That's not how low the price will be to start. In fact, the umbrella price is that $5 price from traditional delivery. But over time, competition will drive that price down to 25 cents. I, a couple of things are going on. Many of these technology companies had had to gear up to handle COVID. And they did. They did a beautiful job. I mean, Zoom, what it did going from 20 million users to 200 million users in a year to 18 months, the technology to accommodate that, being able to do that was probably one of the greatest technology feats we've seen in quite some time. And of course, now we're seeing the opportunity with AI for productivity gains, that's one of the primary opportunities associated with AI for traditional companies. And so we think companies need to increase their productivity. And maybe they went a little bit too far hiring as they were trying to address all the needs that COVID presented. So we don't think we don't think this is the technology sector, you know, in some kind of disarray or sunsetting in some way. Quite the opposite. We think they're harnessing new AI tools and other technologies to increase productivity and provide new products and services. We have launched in partnership with Titan, the ARC Venture Fund. Titan is a, it's a social distribution app, again, stirring up uh, a little bit of change in the VC world. 
For a minimum of $500, an individual can have access to some of the most, what we believe are the most important emerging companies in the world. You can find them in our ARC Venture Fund, both on our site at ARC-Funds and on, on Titan, of course. And so $500 minimum, quarterly liquidity up to 5% NAV. For the first time, individuals are going to have access to opportunities that were limited to accredited investors, those with certain income and asset thresholds that many people can't meet. And so we want to democratize, offer up some of these great ideas to everyone. So we're excited about it. We're excited about our partnership with Titan. And we think we're doing a real service. You know, this is really the American way, I would say. And then the other thing we're doing is we're, we've launched in partnership with Eagle Brook two SMAs, one a cryptocurrency SMA, separately managed account, mm -hmm. and another a crypto asset, because we believe this new asset class is going to be incredibly important in terms of transforming the world, but also diversifying portfolios. As I mentioned, I think the bond market is seeing something a little different from what the Fed and maybe what we're seeing from food prices and so forth. If you look at gold, the gold price, which I think is a very important price in terms of people flocking to it for inflation hedge. It peaked way back in August of 2020 and is a leading indicator. I think the biggest reason is interest rates coming down, inflation coming down, because the terrible performance in growth and innovation-based strategies over the last 18 months had been a function of expectations that interest rates and inflation would continue to rise and that we were in a, stuck in a 70s-style inflation. We are not. I think the bond market is beginning to lead the Fed. And yes, I do think we're not going to go straight up, of course. We don't want to go straight up. We want this to be much more deliberative in terms of investing. So, so yes. And new NASDAQ, it, this is an expression we've been using. We were trying to communicate last year, hey, our portfolios do not include the stocks in the NASDAQ for the most part, except for Tesla, perhaps. And, you know, the world is changing incredibly quickly here. And we're seeing this with AI, of course, all of the, the news around chat GPT that's captured the public's imagination, captured business imagination. It's happening very quickly. Uh, and our portfolios are very focused on the future. The NASDAQ and other broad-based benchmarks are much more traditional. They are, they are uh, really the, the names at the top of those portfolios are the companies that have really done incredibly well over the years. But we think many of them will be disrupted. And we're seeing already questions about Google and search and could Microsoft Bing disrupt Google? This was the former disruptor when it came to advertising and media.